we were asked to describe the transformation n graph y equals two times tangent of the quantity three x plus pi over two plus one. We will determine the transformation based upon the equation being in the form of y equals a times tangent of the quantity bx plus c plus d. First notice how a, the coefficient is equal to two. Because a is positive two, the graph is going to be stretched vertically by a factor of two. So let's make a note a equals two, which implies a vertical stretch by a factor of two. Next, the period is equal to pi divided by b, where in our case, b the coefficient of x is three. So pi divided by b is equal to pi divided by three, and therefore the period is pi divided by three radians, or one-third pi radians. Next, the phase shift is equal to negative c divided by b, where in our case, b is equal to three, and c is equal to pi over two. So negative c divided by b is equal to negative pi over two divided by b, which is three. Dividing by three is equivalent to multiplying by one-third. This is equal to negative pi over two times one-third, which equals negative one-sixth pi, or if we want negative pi over six. So because the phase shift is negative one-sixth pi radians, the shift is left one-sixth pi radians. And then finally, d is equal to positive one, and therefore the vertical shift is up one unit. And now to help us graph the transformation of the tangent function, let's first review our knowledge of the basic tangent function, which is shown here. Normally when graphing the basic tangent function, we focus on the period of pi radians from negative pi over two radians to positive pi over two radians, and then we divide this into four equal subintervals. So we cut it in half and then in half again. Over this period, notice how in the middle we have a point on the horizontal axis, in this case the origin. And then if we move right one fourth of the period, we're up at this point here that has a y coordinate of one. If we go back to the point at the origin and move left one fourth of the period, we go down one unit where the y value is negative one, which is here. Using just these three points, we can make a nice graph of the tangent function because we know the graph approaches the vertical asymptotes. So notice for our graph, the period is one-third pi radians. So if there wasn't a phase shift and the period was one-third pi radians, we would need to recognize that one-third pi is equal to two-sixths pi radians. And therefore, from the origin, we would go right one-sixth pi radians and then left one-sixth pi radians to negative one-sixth pi radians. So again, if there was no phase shift, we would have one complete graph of the tangent function over this interval. And we would also have vertical asymptotes at these x values. But because the graph is shifted left one six pi radians, if we shift this value left one six pi radians, we would be out here at negative two six pi radians or negative one third pi radians. If we shifted this point left one six pi radians, we would be here at x equals zero. Which means for our graph, we will have a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative one-third pi radians, and here at x equals zero radians. So now we've taken care of the period and the phase shift, but notice how we also have a vertical shift up one unit, and therefore the horizontal axis won't be the x-axis, it will be y equals one. So if this is where y equals one, this is going to be the new horizontal axis. The next step is to divide this interval into four equal subintervals. So we'll divide it here as well as here. And now we'll use our knowledge of the basic tangent function, but also recognizing we have a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So first, the point in the middle of this interval is going to be along the horizontal axis, which is going to give us this point here. And now for the basic tangent function, we move right one fourth of the period and then up one unit but because we have a vertical stretch by a factor of two, we are going to go up one times two or two units. So if we go right one fourth of the period, we go up two units, which will take us to the y value of three, which would be this point here. Again, this is two and this is three. 
And now if we go back to this point on the horizontal axis, if we go left one fourth of the period, instead of going down one unit, we go down one times two or two units, which would take us down to y equals negative one, which is here, giving us this point on the graph of our tangent function. And again, from here we know our graph is going to approach the vertical asymptotes, and therefore this is one piece of the graph of the given tangent function. Now that we have one piece of the graph, we can simply copy and paste this to the right to make more of the graph. So starting at x equals zero, because the period is one third pi radians, we would go out one third pi radians, so let's say here, divide this into four equal subintervals. We have another vertical asymptote at x equals one third pi radians. In the middle, the point is on the horizontal axis here. If we go right one fourth of the period, we go up two units because of the vertical stretch. If we go left one fourth of a period, we go down two units, again, because of the vertical stretch. We have another piece of the graph of the given tangent function. And let's go ahead and do this one more time. If we go right one third pi radians, one third pi plus one third pi is two thirds pi, which brings us out to approximately here. Divide this into four equal subintervals. Vertical asymptote to the right. In the middle, we're on the horizontal axis, which is here. To the right one fourth of the period, we go up two units. If we go left one fourth of the period, we go down two units to this point here. And we have another piece of the graph of the given tangent function. I hope you found this helpful.